Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror thriller film, from hell. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with an ominous quote from a famed serial killer, Jack the Ripper. Frederick, an inspector, is seen meticulously burning a piece of cotton in a newly lit lamp. He blows his pipe and slowly opens his eyes. In the streets of London during the year 1888, the nightlife fills the stone bricks of the otherwise bland and dead alleys. A prostitute named Mary roams the streets looking for another client, who is rich in both cash and hormone. But it seems that tonight is not her night. Other prostitutes ask her if she is able to get a client for tonight, but she simply says no and goes her way. Two shady men follow her into the alley and press her against the wall. She recognizes them both as frequent creditors of the other prostitutes. One of the shady men warns Mary and tells her that she and the other prostitutes are expected to pay their dues earlier. She tells them that they are still busy working and are not able to pay at the moment. He warns her one last time that they should prepare the money by tomorrow or else he will end her prostituting life. The next morning, Mary and her friends clean themselves up and get ready for another day at work. One of her friends, a rich woman who was also a former prostitute, asks Mary to look after her baby because her husband will be coming back today. The rich woman hears all about the troubles that Mary and the others face and tells them that she will ask her husband to give them the money they need to pay the shady men. Later, a cab driver minds his business on a busy alley until a man subdues him and threatens him that his charge will be coming down very soon. The man tells him to get his charge home quickly and quietly. The man then comes to the apartment of the rich woman and her husband and orders his men to tear it to pieces while they abduct the two of them. Mary sees this unfold, but stays silent to avoid attracting attention. Later that evening, Mary tries to keep the baby calm, but it starts crying due to hunger. She decides to take the baby to the rich woman's parents, and her red-haired friend tells her to be quick and meet her at some place. They part ways, but her friend is attacked in the dark and stabbed multiple times. Frederick spends his evening in the opium house, vividly remembering scenes from the previous murders of Jack the Ripper and future ones. He is a successful inspector valued by the police because he has the psychic talent of sensing killers' methods and identities. He imagines every detail of the crime scenes with immense detail, but his thinking is interrupted by his surgeon, who wakes him up with a slap to the face. His surgeon brings him back to the stations and updates Frederick on the status of the murders. Down in the moor, Frederick and his surgeon learns that a woman was just murdered. The woman is revealed to be Mary's friend. The mortician tells them that the murderer removed her private organs before cutting her throat. Frederick is confused because the woman lying on the table before him is not the woman he imagined earlier. An ambitious young doctor gives a demonstration in the Royal London Hospital and coins it a fix to dementia. The assistants bring in a young woman suffering from dementia, and he proceeds to knock on her temporal lobe a few times. In the evening, Mary meets with her friends in the tavern and discusses what happened with the murder of their friend. They come to the conclusion that the shady men are behind this because they did not pay for their protection. Another friend of Mary's is serving her client in the alley when one of the shady men attacks her and asks for their payment. He is about to stab her eye when a roaming police officer chases away the shady man. She seeks help from her friends, but they take advantage of her and leave her alone on the busy street. Later, she is murdered by Jack the Ripper, and her body is left in the street. The guard finds her later and sounds the alarm for murder. In the morning, Frederick examines the body and determines that she was murdered inside a carriage because it rained last night and her clothes were dry. He also discovers that it is highly likely that Jack the Ripper is working with someone else. He notices grapes hidden in the body. He tells the surgeon that he has seen this particular murder in his visions inside the opium house. They bring the body to the morgue, and the morticians refuse to examine the body because of the brutality inflicted upon her. Frederick convinces them to examine once more so that he can find out which organs were taken by the killer this time. Frederick orders the policeman to interview every veterinarian, butcher, and furrier in the district. The policemen laugh at first, but once Frederick explains to them the brutality of the crimes committed against the victims, they listen like a puppy. After Frederick breaches the policeman, he reports to his superior, telling him that he's waiting for the police surgeon's report for more details on the bodies. The superior notes that the killer is not an Englishman, and perhaps an Indian did it, or a person with poor status. Frederick hints that it might possibly be a tradesman, or someone wealthy enough to give grapes to their victims. The superior tells Frederick to keep him informed, and sends him on his way. News quickly spread around London regarding the gruesome murders. People took to the streets in a witch hunt to find the murderer. Shops around London closed their services, in fear that a public riot from the manhunt might damage their stores. Frederick returns home and enjoys a nice bottle of wine before drugging himself in order to see visions of the next murder. 
During his vision, he sees that he is in bed with a blonde woman who tells him that she bears his child. But soon, he awakens to the sound of the church bells. Frederick and the surgeon visit the funerals of Mary's friends. They introduce themselves to them, but they deny them the chance to ask questions, except for Mary. She tells them that the shady man is behind the murders, and she mocks Frederick for not knowing that. Frederick tells her to testify against the shady man, so that he may do something about the situation. Back in their living quarters, Mary's friends decide that they can go to the newspaper publishers and tell them their story about the shady man, and they could get paid enough money to pay their debts. Mary decides that it is best to talk to Frederick instead, despite the protests of her friends. Suddenly, the owner of the living quarters barges in and tells them to leave, because they paid only for one person, and four of them are staying in the room. Meanwhile, Jack the Ripper prepares for his next victim. The cab driver goes to the slum areas of the district. The cab driver calls upon another of Mary's friends and tells her that a gentleman is waiting for her someplace else. He convinces her to come inside the cab by luring her with grapes. She arrives at the alley and she is killed by Jack the Ripper. Her screams are muffled by the sounds of the train nearby. Frederick arrives at the crime scene the next morning. The people gather around to tell law enforcement something about the murders. Frederick observes the body and the piece of a leather apron stuck inside her mouth. He tells the surgeon that he saw her in his visions last night. Frederick puts two coins in her eyes and tells the surgeon that she may need them for the ferryman of the underworld. Later, Frederick asks his superior to assign him a surgeon who has a strong will to perform the autopsies for him because the current police surgeon is unwilling to perform the dissections anymore. His superior denies his request and states that if the police department started consulting doctors, it would spell bad publicity. In the evening, Frederick attends a gala for medical practitioners and hopes to find a surgeon who will do the autopsies for him. He meets the doctor and asks for his help on the Ripper case. He tells Frederick that he should be looking for foreigners and not people like him. Suddenly a retired surgeon, who is the physician to the royal family, approaches Frederick and entertains him instead. Frederick draws on the whiteboard a knife and asks the retired surgeon what kind of knife it is. He identifies it as a Liston knife and asks Frederick for the police surgeon's reports on the autopsies. The retired surgeon discovers that Frederick has an addiction to opium and prescribes him some medicine to keep his appetite up. Before he leaves, he tells Frederick to look for someone who clearly studied human anatomy because Jack the Ripper is more than likely an educated person. The next day, Frederick informs the policeman to search anyone who is suspicious, whether they are well-dressed gentlemen or common folk. He also points out a few areas where the next murder might happen and tells the men to search those areas frequently. Meanwhile, the cab driver calls Jack the Ripper to his apartment and tells him that he cannot be an accomplice to his murders anymore. He pleads to the murder, but he simply tells him that they cannot stop yet. Frederick takes Mary to the tavern and buys her dinner. He asks her to carefully think about anything out of the ordinary that may have happened to her or her friends. She points out to him that she took care of her friend's baby before she was abducted, and now the baby has gone missing. Back in the cab, Frederick and the surgeon discover that a man named Ben is related to the abduction of the child, but he is untouchable because he belongs to a special branch in the enforcement. Frederick sneaks into his office to gather evidence, and he finds a box pertaining to the events of the murders. Ben arrives in the building, and the surgeon sends a barrel of gunpowder rolling through the gate to give time for Frederick to escape. The next day, Frederick and Mary go to the last place where the rich woman was seen. It's revealed that she was lobotomized because they believed that she was insane and violent. Frederick tries to ask her questions, but it seems that whatever she says will not make any sense. Frederick takes Mary to an art gallery where he shows her around and asks for her opinions of the paintings. He shows her a painting of a man whom she recognizes as the rich woman's husband. The painting turns out to be a portrait of the prince and heir to the English throne. In the evening, Frederick visits the retired surgeon, only to be met by the doctor, who stops him at the door. The retired surgeon tells Frederick to come in. He reveals to Frederick that the prince has been indulging himself with unfortunate women, which resulted in him getting cephalus. Frederick comes to the conclusion that the prince is the one committing the crimes, in revenge to Mary and her friends. But the retired surgeon disproves this theory and tells him that the prince is currently not in the state to carry out such murders. Later, Frederick calls upon Mary to tell her that he is called for the arrest of the shady men and that the baby of the rich woman will be taken after the whole situation is over. He gives her money and tells her to take her friends and rent a room and lie low for a few days. Mary kisses Frederick, but they are interrupted by a passing enforcer. Frederick finds out that Ben once served in the Vernagier Guards of the royal family. 
He tells the surgeon that Ben is responsible for cleaning up the mess of the prints, which means it might be possible that he is the main suspect in the recent killings. It turns out, the prince married the rich woman, with Mary and her prostitute friends as witnesses. Ben and the retired surgeon are going after Mary and the rest of her friends to cover up the scandal and protect the royal family, because the prince is dying of syphilis, which will cause the child of the rich woman to be heir to the throne of England. Two of Mary's friends are killed on the same night. Frederick is ambushed in an alley and is knocked unconscious by well-dressed men. He wakes up to hear the alarms coming from the police officers. He discovers a recent crime scene and a phrase on the wall written by Jack the Ripper. The superior comes and tells the surgeon to wash off the phrase to prevent panic. Frederick is also suspended by the superior, who is a member of the Freemasons. Frederick takes a hit of opium and receives new visions. He then gets a book and reads about the history of the Freemasons and deduces that they have something to do with the recent murders. He visits the retired surgeon and confronts him about the recent discovery he had. The retired surgeon turns out to be Jack the Ripper and also a member of the Freemasons. Frederick reaches for his gun to shoot him, but he is knocked out by Ben, who is an operative of the Freemasons. Jack the Ripper successfully carries out his last murder, which is Mary. The Freemasons try to kill Frederick, but he kills the operatives by overturning a Ferrari carriage. He arrives at the place where he believes Mary is, but finds that it is all too late and that she has already died. Later, the Freemasons put the retired surgeon to a private trial so as to avoid suspicion from the public. Instead of having him killed, they opt to lobotomize him instead to prevent the secret of the prince from reaching the ears of the public. Afterward, a letter from Mary reaches Frederick, telling him that Jack the Ripper has mistaken one of her friends for Mary and that she is alive and well. Frederick burns the letter, knowing that the Freemasons may kill Mary if they find out she is still alive. Frederick eventually dies of a drug overdose. The surgeon finds his dead body, and the movie ends with the surgeon putting two coins over his eyes while bidding him farewell. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.